Hello everybody, welcome to my new video and as promised last time we are going to have a look at the Docker stuff today. So, um, I think to get started let's have a look at the Docker file. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from Ubuntu, I'm installing just some basic tools like the um, ability to go, do um, app repository, call language pack for the UTF-8 and yeah, that's about it. Next up, what we're doing over here is we're installing um, all the tools on all the modules for um, PHP 7.1. Then we are doing um, Node for NPM so we can build the JavaScript files and we can do the Webpack stuff and the SAS stuff for Laravel, for instance. Um, here we're installing Yarn from the repository. And last but not least is Composer. So we've got Composer, we've got Yarn, we've got Webpack there as well, we've got Node and NPM, we've got PHP 7.1 and then just some basic packages, right? So I think um, the next step would be to show you guys what the Jenkins file looks like at the moment. So this is after I've played with it a little bit. So yeah, at the top, Within pipeline, there's agent, and we're just telling it that the build agent is a Docker file, and I've created that Docker file, Jenkins build PHP, under my name. It's also on the Docker Hub if you guys want to have a look at it, look at it, play with it. Um, and then we've got simple four stages, right? So the first one is Composer, which just installs the Composer packages for PHP. We've got Yarn, which just fetches the node modules. Oh, sorry. Yeah, node modules. Um, equivalent to npm install. Um, next thing what we're doing is we're doing an npm run production to build our JavaScript files and our CSS files. And last but not least, we're just doing a PHP unit for um, unit testing. So these are the current steps. So um, I think what I'll do next now is I'm going to show you what the Jenkins dashboard looks at the moment. So I've run two tests here, both successful. So you can see here, this is the checkout part where it fetches the files from Git. We've got the agent setup, which just tells it to use Docker. We've got Composer, which fetches the files for PHP. We've got Yarn, which fetches the files for um, Node. We've got the NPM production, which just builds our JavaScript files and builds our CSS files. And then we've got our unit testing over there. So, um, I'd like you to take you through now some of the pain points I've had and then try and explain some of the things I've done to try and get around those pain points. Okay, so the first one here, yeah, the first build, that was just a silly part, um, a silly mistake on my part. All I did is just there were some wrong, conf um, wrong configurations for fetching the file from Git or from GitHub specifically. Uh, so I'm going to take you, I think, starting at number two. So. Number two, if we go to the console output, as all that happened here, there was a problem with um, permissions. So what happens is by default Jenkins, the Jenkins user was not allowed to use the Docker server. So um, if you guys that don't know, on Ubuntu, when you install Docker from app, um, from the sort of Docker app repository, is is that it creates a user called Docker and a group called Docker and only users that belong to the group Docker is allowed to access the Docker server to, um, for instance, um, call, well, basically query Docker or um, run Docker commands on the server. So one of the things I've done is um, I've moved things around a bit. So before I've had um, Docker the Docker install after the Jenkins install, but because what we want now before we start up job, Jenkins is to be able to add the Jenkins user to Docker as that we've put Docker first and as part of the Jenkins installation script, we've got this little part here that says user mod, which adds the Jenkins user to the Docker group. That's what that line does. It says that add the Jenkins group to this Docker. Oh, sorry, the Jenkins user to the Docker group. And that's how I got past that problem. So, there you'll see that I tested, it was successful. So what I did at number four is I started um, creating some more ones. So, 
as I went along, I've had a much simpler version of this file, which didn't have all this like composer step or yarn step, or all of these things. So what we're going to see now is just my progression in building up this file as it is now and all the sort of problems I had while I was doing that. So at number three, let's see, we've got the stage for where did we fall? Okay, so you'll see, I think, yes. So this was a memory issue when running yarn. Um, the server basically ran out of memory. So if we go back to this file, what I tried to do there in terms of fixing it is I, try, I added a swap file. So this adds a swap file to the server. Because normally when you install a, install a server on one of these cloud hosting providers is that they don't provide you a swap file for the server out of the box. If you want one, you have to add one manually. And this is what we're doing here so that we have about one gig of swap space. So if to make sure that we can build yarn. So also if you're running, start running this thing into production, we might actually want to go up to a uh, two gigabyte or four even. If you, for instance, if you're running, um, your Jenkins workers, your Jenkins slaves on the same server as your Jenkins master. Okay, so let's see the next step. So that's all I got past that part. I just added a swap space. I think, and these five and six, I think were the same issues actually, as I was busy testing stuff. So they will see as that inner memory, so ran out of memory. Um, so let's see, number six was, I think something different. So over here, we've got the NPM run, production, we built everything, everything worked wonderfully, yay, okay. But you'll see here, when we got to the end of testing, there was one error. So, and what happened is we did not specify an application key. So this is something specific to Laravel. So what I did there instead, normally what they do is just tell it to take the env4, copy it to env, and then generate the key. But what I did here is, is I just did this. I said app key as part of my PHP unit test um, sort of environment settings. Let's so just take the app key and then just copy paste one in there to get it to run. And um, after that, I think seven or eight is what you see on the screen. So, and that's how we did that. So if you see over here, two commits is there's change Jenkins file. So that was the last one. And the last one, this number eight I ran was just to see if there was any caching that could improve the time it took to run this command. So you also see at the moment what it's giving is giving us an average about what? One minute, 12 seconds per bowl. So I click the button once minute, 12 seconds later on, I've, it's done. Um, so to recap, I think quickly is that we've got a Docker file here. It gives us sort of an environment where we can run PHP Fetch the PHP files via Composer, fetch the node module files via Yarn, and then build our JavaScript and CSS, and also to be able to run um, simple PHP unit tests. And then, okay, so that's that. Okay, so let's see. And then in here, we've had to make a change, and then put in Docker before Jenkins, adding the Jenkins user to the Docker group, and then also adding a swap space to the server. Okay, so another disclosure, I have not actually tested this file. So what I did is, is that after I created the server, I ran some of these commands on the server and then I copied them back into the Terraform file. Now, if this doesn't work out of the box, I'll have an update on my next video about um, some of the changes that I've had to make to this file again to make sure that all of this stuff, all the swap space, the stocker stuff, and then this stuff does work out of the box with this Terraform file. But for now, I think that's fine. And then last day, I think, was just the Jenkins file. So set the agents to a Docker image where all these commands will run. Fetch the PHP files, fetch the node module files, Bought the JavaScript and the CSS and then do a simple unit test. And I think that's it for now. Guys, um, thank you so much for joining me for this next video. I'm not quite sure exactly what I want to do in the next video. Um, I think might flesh this out. Might look at deploying something. The files that Jenkins has built for us. 
um, onto a server. Uh, might do something similar like this, but then maybe for something like Golang instead of PHP. Um, like I said, I really don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm really hoping that you guys will find it interesting. And um, if you really like my channel, if you like this video, please give me a like, um, please subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.